So we've been looking at heat that can be gained or lost during chemical changes, when one chemical changes into another chemical. And now we're going to look at um, heat being absorbed or released during physical changes. So in other words, it doesn't change into another chemical. It stays one chemical the whole time, um, but the uh, temperature of that particular substance might be changing. So maybe you have a piece of aluminum foil that you're warming up. And so it stays aluminum foil the whole time. It's just the temperature of that aluminum foil goes up or down. That's what we're going to look at next. So uh, for either physical changes or chemical changes, the energy that is gained, lost during a reaction, we could look at is this Q equals MC delta T equation. Q represents the energy or heat in this case, since we're focusing specifically on heat energy. We measure energy in joules or calories if you're talking about the English system of measurement. M represents the mass in grams. A C represents something called the specific heat. Specific heat has units of joules on top and then grams degree C on the bottom, or if you're using the English system of measurement, calories over grams degree C. Then the temperature, the delta T, is T final minus T initial. Just in case you have to get back and forth between calories and joules, I'm going to give you guys a conversion factor that you can use on your problems. 4.184 joules is the same thing as one calorie. So what is a specific heat and what does it mean to have a high C value or a low C value? What, what does that mean? Well, specific heat is the amount of energy you need to get one gram of your substance. to go up by one degree Celsius. So in other words, um, if you think back to that demo that you guys saw with the food coloring and the color intensity, uh, it's how many food coloring drops energy you have to put in to get one gram of your substance to go up by one degree. So Imagine it's going from light pink to darker pink, um, that one degree temperature change there. So what does it mean to have a, a big C, a low C, a high specific heat, a low specific heat? Um, what that would mean, let's look at two substances that you guys are very familiar with. Uh, let's look at solid aluminum. So a picture, an aluminum pan, aluminum foil and liquid water. Now, if you were to put some water into a pan and start the heat and start to heat that up on, on your stove, um, after probably one minute on the stove, you wouldn't want to pick up that pot from the bottom with your bare hands. But after just one minute of heating, you probably could still dunk your hand into the water that's in the pot. That has to do with the substance's specific heat. If it requires lots of energy to make the temperature budge, that means that it has a high C value. So a uh, high C means you need lots of heat energy in order to change the temperature.
you have to put in heat and heat and heat and heat and heat, and then the temperature goes up by one degree. And then you put in lots of heat, lots of heat, lots of heat, lots of heat some more, and it goes up by one other degree. Um, maybe you guys have heard the expression, a watched pot never boils, that if you have a pot full of water, it feels like it takes forever for that water to start boiling. That's why when you look at water's specific heat compared to all other substances specific heats, water is so much higher than everybody else's on that entire chart. It's because you have to put in a ton of heat energy, a lot of food coloring drops in order to make the water change temperature to go from a light pink to a dark pink, a low temperature to a high temperature. Whereas other substances heat up easily. So when you have low C values, these guys heat up quickly and easily because they do not require lots of energy to change the temperature. So in other words, you just barely put in any heat energy at all. You put in like one food coloring drop and it goes from light pink to dark red in one second flat, right? Heats up quickly and easily. You don't have to work at it. So that's why a lot of metals, for example, um, heat up pretty quickly. Their specific heats are relatively low. And so their, temp their temperatures will climb quickly even if they're not exposed to a lot of heat. That's not the case with water, that you'd have to heat it and heat it and heat it and heat it, and its temperature would hardly budge at all. So let's try uh, one example problem here uh, using that equation. So if our equation was Q equals MC delta T, it tells us 125 joules of energy are released when a sample of iodine cools down. The iodine is 193 degrees after cooling. What's its original temperature? Um, one thing that, oops, I forgot to put in here. Can you guys add this? Uh, I meant to put in here, typo, a five gram sample of iodine. So we have to look at the equation and see what information we know. So if it tells you 125 joules of energy are released, and it gives you this little hint here, what would the sign of Q be? If we're releasing heat energy, we set up above that it would be a negative Q. When things absorb heat energy, we get positive Q. So I'm gonna plug in a negative 125 for my Q. The mass is it's a five gram piece of iodine. Now I need the C value for iodine. So I need to go to my chart and find the C value. So let's find iodine. Right here is iodine. Now, it doesn't tell us whether the iodine is a solid, liquid, or gas in this problem. So how do we know if I'm supposed to use 0.217 0.32 or 0.146. Well, on your chart here, we have melting points and boiling points. So if something is below the melting point, if it has not yet hit the temperature at which it turns into a liquid, it must still be a solid. So any temperatures below 114 for iodine, it would still be a solid. If you're between the melting point and the boiling point, you've already melted, but not yet boiled. So in other words, if you're between 114 and 184, you must be in the liquid stage. If you are above 184, you're past the boiling point, so you must be a gas. So this one says that if the iodine is at 193 after cooling, what was its original temperature? So in other words, the coolest it gets is 193. It used to be warmer than that. The entire time our iodine is above the boiling point. So it must be a gas 
in this problem. So I'm going to use the 0.146 off of that chart. So I'll plug that in for my C. Now delta T, we're always going to do T final minus T initial. T final, it's 193 degrees after cooling. We want to know what the initial temperature was. So we know the final temperature is 193 degrees, but we don't know what the initial temperature is. Then it just turns into an algebra problem where you're solving for that TI. And what your calculator will spit out for you is 364.2 degrees Celsius. But when you go to sig fig round, because our mass only has one sig fig in it, that five grams, I would have to round my answer to only have one sig fig. And so I would make that 400 degrees Celsius.